Hello, everybody. Stark here. Um, I just wanted to let me talk about some things. I'm gonna see. All right. Everything sounds like it's going up as it should. Um, things have not been good for a little bit. Um, sorry, I'm trying to find my walkthrough that we were using for Killer Creek. Because we're trying to save everybody. There we go. Well, um, just a few things I want to talk about before we get started. Is, um, I'm just feeling a little burned out today. Um, it's one of those situations where when you work seven days a week and you have a lot of health problems, it starts to get to you a little bit. And it's getting to me a little bit. Um, but it's okay. You know, um, we're going to get through this, and I want to thank my wife for being so supportive uh, during this time. So if I'm low energy today, that's kind of why. Um, last week, I didn't stream on Thursday because uh, I was sick. I actually had a throat infection, and the reason why I'm calling it a throat infection is they, they tested me for strep. And it came back negative. They tested me for COVID. It came back negative. But I had all the symptoms of strep. And so I'm better, which is wonderful. My voice is back, which is awesome because I, I couldn't, I could barely talk. It was like, you know, uh, my voice is back, but my nausea is still here. So I'm just sort of just going through a lot right now, you know. So we're going to try to get through the next part of uh, Killer Frequency. We're trying to save everybody. And uh, I, I, excuse the mess. Uh, I'm cleaning my office right now. I'm trying to uh, trying to kind of reorganize things. I'm going to be selling a bunch of my toys off and stuff. And you're going to be seeing some changes, especially in the background uh, through throughout the, the coming month. Uh, funny enough, while I was cleaning, I did find some things. I found my um, my Pokemon Blue. It's complete. It, the box has seen better days, but it's complete. And then, as I was cleaning, I found this as well. So, yeah. Pokemon Fire Red. Better condition. Complete. So that was pretty awesome. Um, kind of lifted my spirits a little bit. <laughs> And I'm trying not to be uh, such a bum, too, you know, like, I'm trying to... Oh, and I got a longer cord, so that, uh, that's helped. Alright, let's go to the show overlay. I do welcome everyone that's here, if you're talking, if you're just watching at home, you know, and all this fun stuff. Hello, Collar. You're live on the screen with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. Oh, no. As a local small business owner, but, um, time, we beat the game. Horrified. Now we're just trying to the see the ending where everyone's saved. We are using a walkthrough, <laughs> I so I do there. want to thank the person it's who made it. It's a scary that. time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe, family-friendly place. Hold on, sorry. Good for you, friend. I'm glad you're keeping safe and busy. Thank you. Oh, I'm really living hey, the Carla. American dream. How's it going? <laughs> Killing my business. <laughs> you must really, really love your work. Carla, oh, how's it going? I do. My small business really is my whole world. Yep. What's your small business? Oh. I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you asked, it's Party's Pizza! The best and only pizza place 
Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two for one. God damn it, Ponty, no! No free ads! <sighs> I mean, I guess we can't be that mad at him. Calling Ponty's did save Virginia. Okay, so I can nice be mad, on. Peggy. That sort of thing just. Uh, I can be mad. I Look, forgot where we had stopped now. last time. We already have somebody else on the line. Hey. Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. <sighs> take a deep breath and let's go. Evening caller. This is Forrest Nash. Is at host work. of 189.16. And, and tonight, Thank you, T -Baron. Thank you so much, buddy. In. Hi. Hello. Am I on air? Sure, our caller. What's your name? All right. And what so did it's you get Eugene. First tonight? Name's Eugene Stein. And I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show. Ooh. Looking up at the stars and waiting for her. For her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. We planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight. Mm. To take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming, or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Bingo. Here's what I was looking oh, for. Oh, no. Carla. Did your did your sandwich hurt Tiburon? Oh no. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. But uh no, Uncle Terry. Oh jeez. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on. I hear some I know, uh, Someone told me I Admiral. need to take a vacation. Molly! I'm in the middle! And um It'll take a little while to get here, but uh, oh, thanks no. again, Forrest. It's been good talking. I feel like when you take a wait vacation, a your problems Molly can't listen. just wait for you, you know? And maybe. No, no, this is supposed to be the best night of my life! Maybe clearing your Not mind. The worst. Eugene, do you know the way out? It wouldn't be the maze maze if he could just remember the way, Forrest. She's right! Listen, Eugene, breathe, <sighs> hide, and call back in a minute. We'll get you out. <laughs> I... I'll do it for Molly. But please, hurry! Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. All right, we're gonna play. But yeah, like... You know, now I've been it's time health to go problems with the flow and, and working this is their seven days or six days help. a week. How the hell am I supposed to get him through you the just, maze maze? You, just you know, Barbara, our receptionist, and she's a maze maze fanatic. That in June, she I turned 40, year. you know. I was I just been thinking a lot. Week, and... She changed her mind. Maybe we should call Barbara then? If she's so big on the maze maze. Well, we could. What do you guys think? I actually know her number. But she probably has Maze Maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can find. That'll hopefully be enough. Uh, which one is Barbara again? Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh, Mars Forrest, and I've seen you speak to her. in the house. Oh, Peggy. She's the receptionist. The killer is Colonial Chihuahua with the Mexican Doritos. Never does any That's work because she's probably talking true, to Brad actually. all day. <laughs> Ring any bells? Thank right. you, Mazen, for Sorry, that. I, I need the last. The stress of... No excuses. Just go and find something to Chihuahuas help us. Chihuahuas are not real. Remember that, guys. Chihuahuas are not your friend. Chihuahuas are not real. And they will... If you Anyone? do see one, yeah, I it's found a, a robot the in the skies. In the trash. Why was it in the trash? Uh, never mind. It doesn't matter right now. That's a question for Barbara later. Oh! Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. Uh, t I'm I'm just dealing with some some just burnout fatigue right now uh work's getting hard and people are just being buttholes about it um uh, number one i just saw the sandwich that uh carla suggested 
and no wonder your stomach hurts. Anything with mayonnaise is disgusting. <laughs> I love all the community, but mayo is disgusting. <laughs> oh, ew. I will not, I will not ever say it's okay to eat mayo. <laughs> oh, poopy. What'd I do? All right. Let's help you, Jean, real quick. Okay, Forrest. All right, I'm going to be silent on chat for a little bit. Stop. Stop. Stop music. I'm going to push the button. That's what I'm doing. Time to turn the music Stop. off. Maggie. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. But yeah. I hope you lovers um, like that track. And I've been working for I've been working security for 13 years. Maze, and Eugene, you're back on I'm air. tired of being the punching bag, you know? I'm lost, Forrest! I just ran and I I don't know where I am. I've been across right. And I want to change careers. It's just hard to statue. find something. There are hay bales you know. painted gold on my right. All right, we gotta go left. Go left. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, I went left. Go backwards. Then tried a right. I have a pig statue in front of me and a creepy rocking horse on my left. Go backwards. Oh God! Why didn't I just? Over. Right, go left or right, go left or right, go left or right, go left. Or right. I'm at a crossroads. There's a pitch for a statue up ahead. Which way? Go left. Oh, this wasn't how tonight was meant to go. I just wanted some love. Don't we all? Don't we all, Eugene? Go right. Go right. All right, I'm going back to chat. Yeah, man, you gotta take care of your mental health. I can't too. run. Gotta take time Not to more. The reset button. I just passed a cordon silo. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, else. I wish more people took mental health um, more serious. You know. It's one of those situations where, like, hold on, uh, go right. I'm out. All right, we got him. But, um, I think I held my breath the whole time. It's just time. hard sometimes. I um, think it went pretty well, I was told. You know, being a guy. <laughs> I think you're right. I'm not saying being a guy is hard, way, but it does come with problems sometimes. Why do you think Molly sometimes. missed their date? Um, do you think she's okay? You know, guys Unfortunately don't, guys for don't Eugene, talk about their problems. I think she probably guys never left Guys aren't supposed home. to have mental problems, you know, stuff like that. And you get you get upset, you know, you get flustered. Most Thank definitely, you for Carla. calling in, Most Mr. Definitely. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, the, the Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Thank you. That's really wonderful of you to say. What's your name, We don't Caller? trust this person, remember. Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long mm -mm. Ride Home. Mm -mm. That old song. Sure. Mm -mm. We got it. No. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. So I wonder if that All was right, the folks. song that was playing. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're going to find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. She threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I. That's probably why we died. I threw it out the window the earlier today. 
if we don't talk about it from exactly exactly <laughs> Maggie, that's a bit extreme. And like, I grew up with my grandparents, so like that old school mentality: men don't cry, yada yada yada. Like and uh, you know, so the I thing is, it like, it, right it affects your heart, windows. you know. And holding on hour, to anger, regret, so and all these things really it affects you, and it grows like cancer. I'm sorry, Brad was being a dick. I, thanks, Forrest. Nice guy, Forrest. Let's just play a different song. But um, we've got more important things to think about anyway. Because I, gotcha. I, I questioned if I was going to stream okay, today. Folks, here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was like, do I stream? And I had. Of see. all the songs to request, why did it have to be that one? That Gee, the Peggy, what did the barn find to you? I you wrote that song pride, for like, one. It gets real on. old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <sighs> Why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Well, you know, um, Winnie is my emotional support animal. Sorry to cut the music okay. short, folks. Callers and take priority it's like tonight. She knows, Welcome to 189.16, know? um, The Scream. It's like one of those things Forrest where now. I'll come home and she's waiting for me. Forrest. Thank God, it's me again. Oh, Murphy. Murphy! Hey, what, uh, what brings you back? Let's see, T-Rone says, I, I oh, one, got me, man. Once, one time watched the movie I, Hachi and uh, refused to cry through it. I felt like I, I was going to have a heart attack. Man, I have not seen that one. I have not. Uh, that's not important right now. Just tell me what happened. Locked him in the I got a flashlight, but... Oh. Oh, goddamn. I smell smoke. I think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now, or I'm gonna die. Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just... Come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? He... Oh, God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. Lovely. They can't do anything. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho he on the east last end time of Myers Lane. But he's... old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Oh! I didn't see these last time. But yeah, this is the person we, we need. Alright, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Call Catherine. All right, give me a second. All right. You gotta take care of yourself. Do what makes you happy. Don't let others drag you down. I, I'm, I'm trying. I really am. I am. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. But uh, I just, I think I need a career change. Because my boss lies Call to coming me. In. It's Catherine. And the she place and Murphy are I'm now both on at, the line. They give me a spoon to dig a trench, you know? And so when things go awry, they want to blame me. Hello, for Catherine, it. are you there? Just, what, uh, what, after what's 13 years, at the plant? I'm, I'm tired oh, of it. Things up in smoke. I... And I didn't take a vacation I'm last in. year. And, um, well, I took oh, a vacation, but I did the Christmas God, play and spent a lot of time, you know, painting. Murphy, can you see anything at all? Yeah, I got a little flashlight. Guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm not. Tr I'm trying not to bring the mood down, so I do apologize. 
What does it say on the newspaper? It's uh, the Henderson headline. What was that? My reception is terrible in here. Please, of course, tell me where to okay. go. Uh, recycling? Go to recycling. Recycling. Got it. Come on, Catherine. Murphy, do you know what part of the plant you're in? I'm in a dumpster, man. What do you want from me? <laughs> uh. Crusher. Catherine, go to the crusher. Henderson container. I'm nervous. I found him. Thank God. Let's go. It's coming down. Give me your phone. <laughs> I I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I gotta go, work calls, have a great stream, dude. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Tiburon. I appreciate y'all so much. Oh, man. You saved my life. We're just gonna go until we get to Thank the end you. of this game and Thank play you. something new uh, and, and I swear to you, next week now, we're going. I'm gonna race Fernando to be like you. Oh, no, that's a good I'm idea. I'm getting my money back from Mr. Robin. Hey, you just get home to your son, okay? Will do, Forrest. Well, folks, Woo, Gallus Green we did it. two folk heroes tonight, Murphy and Catherine. I'm sure their deeds won't soon be forgotten. Great job, Forrest. No time to celebrate, though. We got a caller. You oh. know what to do. All right, folks. Another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors during this awful time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up to bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Jackass. Teddy, this isn't the time for your political ads. Stop. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, We're gonna be as mean as humanly possible. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs over 200. Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. <laughs> a problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? <laughs> yeah, how about the goddamn serial killer? The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable, and... You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it... Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. 
Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. The moral decay of... Thank you. And that's enough of Teddy I didn't think was ever get through all this. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us? I need a minute. We'll be right back Let's after these it. messages. Teddy Gallows Jr. Ah! is a family man. My bad. No! <laughs> Great party, man. <laughs> Thanks. Can I grab another beer? Hey, sure thing. Let me grab you one out of the fridge. Alright. Oh, no. We got a beer. What am I gonna do? The party is going to be over. Thank oh, you. Fear not. A grill and spray will give you a free six pack of beer if Gallus High Wings. The Grill Reaper. I think that's honestly one of the best names. Order a meal deal from us and you'll get a free six pack of beer if Gallus High Wings. A free six pack? Right. All right. You heard me. Six. Six beers. beers. If Gallus High Wings. Sounds like you've already had enough beers. <laughs> I hope we murder them. <laughs> Me too, Billy. No. Me too. Come on down to Grill and Spring. I'll call a 555. The Trash Panda started their season this week. I want to go see him so bad I can't see straight. Die for. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Forrest. Do you know what the Grill Reaper's favorite grilling spree order is? Uh oh. Uh, I have a feeling you're going to tell me. Uh oh. Spare ribs. Uh, just get me back on the air. And we're back. We got to call it. You know what to do. Caller on line one. It's back. All right. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream Three. with me, Forrest Nash. Uh, hello, caller. Who is this? I need the police. All right. I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god, oh my god! I mean, stay with me, kid. Right, Focus. This is where it's I a prank that turns wrong. If yes, I remember can. correctly. Focus. Tell we didn't save everybody, but I hope this time we can. Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? <sighs> Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're going to get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. Um, there's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Go to the bathroom. Okay, I'll... Jeez. 
Wait, isn't that... Jimmy, that wasn't funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. Old just man? Fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. Jimmy, everyone, it's really not safe to be out. Please, go home. And waste whistling night? <laughs> no way. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Uh... Wait. Oh, no. Mm. Who are you? Oh no, I'm dead. <laughs> Everyone, get inside! Mm. Oh, holy shit. You two, what are you for? Scott Heather, you barricade the back. As long as he's out there and we're in here, we're safe, right? You bought time, but not much. Forrest, we have to. Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Best you gonna Who's have me, Carrie. My friend, we drove out to the old murder house and. Oh, of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Mm. Oh, Jimmy. <sighs> Can you save Jimmy? I'm sorry about Jimmy. Thank you. This is crazy, Forrest. We'll like, figure something out. Between I all think of he's you, always there's gotta be to a die, way to beat right? this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're gonna get killed. <sighs> if only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Uh -huh. yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Forrest, listen. We'll see what we can come up with, and, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... And... No, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to... Oh. Everything okay? No. We... Uh, we're figuring out a plan. But everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. Mm. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the time. We got this. Or else these idiots are going to get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Oh, Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. Uh, we got the list already. kids never learn. Friendship quiz. This might work. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Ugh, they do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks. We're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. <laughs> Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Hmm. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something we can use. All right, let's... Let's, uh... Hey, you find anything that'll help us out? Peggy said her desk is downstairs. Yeah. I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. All right. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one. Whenever you're ready. All right, stop the music. Push play. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. All right, night. guys, we're going to go to Carrie, the Carrie, are you there? Now. Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. 
We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. Mm. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Let's go with Heather, baby. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather. He picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two. The whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Jennifer. Jennifer. <sighs> Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. Makes sense. That is part four. This is a very detailed plan. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between... Who was it again? Hot David, Cynthia, and Scott. Hot David. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you uh you spend a lot of time wearing I'm nervous. Shirtless. You got this, hot David. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Ooh. What's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling. Part five, we trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable bait? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Lisa. Whoa. You're right, Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect practice. <laughs> that should take care of the killer. Top and then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six, we need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be who have we got? Chad, Scott, Cynthia, oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Chad. Oh, perfect. Your go karting experience will be great, Chad. Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go time. It's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. Yeah. Impressive as hell, right? Damn straight. What? All right, now what? Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? All right, let's... We're good to go, Forrest. Alrighty then. Hit it. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Spotter, to the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. Mm. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. That's weird. Spotter says go. Keys, Carrie, you need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him. Ooh. Oh, God. Oh, God. Focus. Breathe. Right. Right. The van keys. We got him. It's up. Jennifer got the gate unlocked. And Hot David should be back any second. Oh. So working. Far, so good. You're doing great. Focus. You got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. All right. Wait. Get into position. Everybody else, 
hide. I want some of this gum under the table. Num nums. Okay, performer. <laughs> now, act like your life depends on it. Ah. Oh. There he is. Ah. He's buying it. <laughs> That's terrible acting, right, guys? It's really spooky listening to it. The damn gate swung shut. All right, let's go. Huh? What? It won't stay open. I'll hold it. Hmm. I, I love like the old timey radio mysteries, and I'm glad that Carrie! they've added them on YouTube so that? I can listen to them. This is intense. Can you get somewhere safe? I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I... It was your plan, Carrie. And it was a great plan. Um. You get home now, Carrie. Before he changes his mind. Right. I, I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Call you Talk when I'm somewhere you. safe. Folks, that was a... That was a lot. Our thoughts go out to Jimmy's parents in this awful time. For any kids listening in, Please stay inside. Stay inside, and yes. Stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song for the girl walking home in the dark. The trophy does say all teens except Jimmy survived the whistling man. Hey, so there's no way command. Jimmy can survive. Forrest Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, oh, no. The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink trying to get everything ready for the harvest festival tomorrow i had a guy from starling security here earlier installing the starling 4000 system so i'm a little behind as for my name so my friends call me that Ricky, is and the I clue now consider you a friend, i was man. wondering how to save this person we're friends now huh? that's well, the that's the rub that's right there he Thanks. gives the clue like yeah, i just saw Sounds this new like system is more so when don asks about the new so system you're like oh. oh i wasn't always roller ricky once upon a time believe it or not i used to go by just ricky yeah back then things were pretty rough 
I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk about it. The thing is, is just how it was. people can be that redeemed. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. And sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again. Cutting roller loose, disco. making shapes. Now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Aw, oh, hello, Max. Well, he certainly sounds like a good boy. Max is my emotional support dog. Just he's a rescue ahead. dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. <laughs> it sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. Yeah. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxi. Oh, you got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. That's pretty groovy, right? I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it is inspiring to Just hear somebody chat, come back from the brink like that. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Right, Better this take it. Should be Dawn, right? Welcome back to 189.16. Why didn't you play my the song? Stream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. Oh, it's Carrie. I made it home safe. Carrie! Hey, I I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though we lost Jimmy and I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I'm I super wanted to brave. ask you why. Why he didn't. Why, why am I? Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did. Why let me hmm. go? Maybe he only wanted to hurt the pranksters. I... Maybe. Did he just think everyone was making fun of him? Did he always hate these hazing rituals? Yes. <laughs> I mean, if he did, why wait all these years to... Why do this now? These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Woo! Thanks, Peggy. Hey, Forrest? Uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And thank you. This next one goes out to Carrie. Uh, oh. I want the soundtrack. I love the soundtrack. You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. <clears throat> About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I, like I don't to think, think like, a reason is a my key guess part of the process. Right here, well, and I can just it's go something to consider. Boop. <laughs> I need to take a break. 
If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. All right. So I'm going to walk away real quick because I want to see if the other record is open yet. That actually freaked me out. I don't know why Ponzi's Pizza Box freaked me out, but here we are. Uh, where was it? I thought it was in this room, but I could be wrong. Was there not one hiding? I guess not. I don't know why I thought when there was one hiding in here. Oh well. Alright, let's go bug Peggy. Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or... Scratch that for us. We have a caller. Alright. You're through to 189.16, The Scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, this call with the teens was awful. Those poor kids. Still, I'm, I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Uh, are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were going to play it, but you didn't. Your name was Dawn, right? What, Peggy? Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn, and I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home? You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? I'll play a track for you, Dawn, but maybe pick another one? We don't exactly have that one in rotation right now. No, Forrest. You do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take a second to grab it. I'm just looking to make sure. <laughs> Call us back tomorrow when this is all over, Don, uh, and I'll gladly play it for you then. No, no, that won't do. Don't worry. I think I can bring you around. Forrest, Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. <laughs> I think I know who's going to be next. What? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest. Uh, Where's Ponty's well, Pizza? Folks, I want to burn that place down. While well, I think things over. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about... I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth... Mm. All right, I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. <laughs> I'll slide you the key to the fire <laughs> door. <laughs> wait, wait, our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it... Uh, you know, I never thought about it, but yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, I'll hold the fort down while you're out. All right, cool. Maybe I'll even get a caller. Okay. That could be exciting. Okay. 189.16. The screw. With me, Boo. Peggy. Peggy, let me through. All right, cool. I don't want the sound of that key. Sounded so horrific. All right, let's go down, down. 
Now we go outside because there's a dude who wants me to die. Check in here one more time. Just make sure that I'm not missing a record or it didn't appear later. Sorry guys, I just want to be thorough. Okay, so we're gonna go outside. We gotta find this stupid, stupid. No, no. It's a record. I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here in the open. Now I do Hello. remember. I do remember there's some stuff I have to get, so that's one of them. Dumpster diving will make your dreams come true. Right. Oh, there's a red one. Dumpster diving. The killer will come for you. That! That sucks. Alright, so that's 30, 30. Oh. Alright, thank you. Alright, <clears throat> which window would she have thrown it out of? Alright, let's find some more 30s while we're here. Yeah, when I first saw that, the killer being like... I thought the killer was going to hop out and get me. Watching me like Batman right now. Sorry, I'm uh, I'm not avoiding chat on purpose. I'm trying to again save my skin because I'm trying to save everyone in the game. All right, there should be one more red one. If you remember at the beginning of the game, someone gets bit right here. A 15. That sounds like the drainage of the damned. Should be the red one. Aha. That's blue. Never mind. Oh. Got it. Alright. Grab this. Grab the CD. Get out of here. Funny enough, the first time I did this, I did it without thinking, and, um, I got a trophy for it. Right? 30, 30, 60, oh. It needs to be 70. My goodness, why am I, why am I not thinking? That Steiner math going on. And you can't run, so that's what sucks. Where did I throw a green? Where did I throw a green? Green, green, green. 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 Come on, take me to the green! Green, green, green. Thought I had them all laying out, but, 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 I did, no, I did, yes, I'm done, thank you. Bingo! Here it is, long ride home.
Okay, let's get out of here before someone eats your face off. I could probably survive that fall. Cool. Now, it looks do... like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive. Clive? What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. Huh, there's a key. I'll just take that. Might be important. So, save it. That's strange. Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. So the first time I unlocked this door, I was like, did I just give the killer access to us? But... You'll have to wait and find out if I did or not. Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive, Clive the, murderer. the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. Let's check chat real quick. Fire door locked behind me. So. Oh wow, we've had a little bunch of people. I do apologize. We've have. Oh my Why mega. did you keep that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, I'm with let's the wife. run through I this again. Say hi. We have a Thank creepy you, board you found in a creepy basement made by our creepy janitor, who you think is hey, Vincent, the creepy How's it going, whistling buddy? man. Yep. And on the creepy board Boston, are the names our... Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's let's Clive's next target? That's right. Phone if you and got we've got to find him. You said there were was four locations listed there, too. Or was that toward the hospital, Carla? The power I would love station, to see Carla start a gas YouTube station, channel. And the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're going to have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. So let's play the song. Oh. This one. This one was hard. How's it going? I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? All right, so I wasn't prepared for this.
guys. I gotta look this up because none of this is in my uh, filler. I'm glad we have all the time in the world. Because, see, what you're supposed to do is look at this board right here and piece it all together based on what's going on. Of course, my phone's going really slow right now. <laughs> Yay. Yay. But, see, you look at these and you, you put together... Um, let's see... We have Keith Walker, and then you have Mark Campbell, sorry, Curry. Uh, so she, Kim was in the improv club, so. We know that this goes with Kim. Sorry guys. My phone So it's Chuck Brody. Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? The gas station. The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Hello? Chuck Brody! Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the Whistling Man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. The Whistling Man? Mm-mm. Who the hell are you? Who is this? This is Forrest Nash. Listen, the Whistling Man's back. We found a list with your name on it and... Oh, God. It's today. The year I finally let I saw an achievement again. I gotta do real I... quick, too. Quit talking and run! I... I think he ran off. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck... Jeez! Ah! It sounds like something blew up! He's using bombs now? I... I... Is Chuck? I don't know. Hang on, we're getting a call. That was the bad... Oh. Okay. Chuck? Chuck! Why did you give the Boys. bad song? It's terrible. The whole goddamn gas station's gone up. Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. Town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Yeah. Damn it, that fireball threw me. I got to get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. Forest man. All right, hold on. Let's check, I can't let's check thank chat you enough, quick. but... Yeah. I gotta go. Wait, uh, I... That was for yeah. you, Stark. Oh, okay. Come and ride the train. Oh, Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Last second people. 
I'll keep in touch with the monster star. Yeah, okay. Here's some music while we regroup here on KFAM 189.16, The, the Stream. stream. Alright. So I'm going to... Why? There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. <laughs> By we, yeah, you mean Nintendo, me, this, right? this game yep. really, um, like I said, it's a, it's I a murder to mystery. All these calls. And I, and I think it's one of those games that's like, before. you get I still have a lot of questions in, right? about those, the first by time the way. I played through, me too. I played through without put any right help, on. you know, to see who I could save, and it was about 50-50. But, um, now, it's more like, Let's see what happens when you complete the story to borrow from Cody Rhodes. Alright, so I'm gonna do the next part, which is go down the basement again. But before I do what they want me to do, I want to do an achievement. Oh, sorry, I forget my bearings. So, there's an achievement. Go in here. Open this up. Grab. Hmm. The key. That. Was this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. Alright, so now. We're gonna take this creepy head. Because, you know, reasons. Run upstairs. There. Place the Mickens head into the fridge. Fridge horror. Like, I don't know why that's a thing, but... <laughs> yeah, definitely it's pretty cool vinyl. Alright, so now we're in this new room. Uh... All right, so we, we gotta we gotta get all the images. Hey, Forrest. Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down the intercom. Sorry, buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Yes. George Bell, 1968. So now we gotta hear all the story. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Wait, George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Actually, Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. I need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful for it. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. Okay, so, so we don't want to buzz the intercom just yet. We are looking for these tapes. Play. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death. Sorry, I'm just answering the text. <laughs> um. Alright, so we gotta find the next one, which I believe is over here. Yeah, alright. Okay. 
Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. This looks Typically useful. Typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet. As though the deceased had been running without stopping. Okay. So the next one, which is... Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate Do we have to listen to them all? I wondered about that. Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the We'll be coming back here later. Now this has it to be is important. the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall. Alright, let's see if this works. Or do I have to listen through the entire thing? Because I'm pretty sure, you know, you hear a little bit and you go through the story. What was that? Something lit up. I just thought it did. Alright, alright. Right, right, right. Peggy, Pexter. What have you found, Forrest? Let's talk about it's the whole story. Autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but. I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape that talks more about how George died. What did it say? Sounds like he was running for his life, sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut off. Again, all I do over. like this game. It's How fun. Would drive someone to do that. I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. <sighs> Excuse me. I found a written autopsy report. What did it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with a report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia There's must be There's a trophy to beat corner. this within four hours. And Wait, I'm like, the caller from I'm earlier. Well, we had to her. call the takeout restaurant. Wasn't her name Virginia? We need to call her back once we finish down here. It, it looks like she might know something about what's going and on. And this is why I went back and I saved everybody. Introduces because in now I can story. talk to Virginia. Post the first time injured. we accidentally killed her. Apparently, now I can talk to her got and we can get some more information door. about what all this a means. car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Hmm. But the written report I found doesn't mention it at all. How did his arm get trapped in a car door after he died? Unless he got it when the police collected his body? I guess someone else must have moved him after he was dead to where he was eventually found. I'm assuming, report, yeah, this is the murder what house. What is going on here? I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier. Sandra See, Sharp. Far. Sandra. Mm. The jazz runner? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Mm, yeah. I remember What's the first time I played that? accident, they got her shot. George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? There's a reservoir. What do you mean? <sighs> Reservoirs don't have time. Oh, excuse me. But I am that's sleepy. what the police report said. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But, yeah, not important right now. The important thing Mine. is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting then? 
that the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests. Eh. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that. You're move his stuff around. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. So she agrees with us. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I, I think it was Clive. Hey. Starting to make sense now. This, Ooh. this is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. I um, I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession, not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You, now we have. Do you think the whistling man? The ultimate got trap. It? Possibly. Oh. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but. Maybe not every victim made it to the phone. Aha! Success. We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. That's good. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident, and the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. Spooky, scary he skeletons. He wasn't people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of them? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Yes! Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you killed all those people. Let me go. Do you think you found everything? I think so. Forrest. Murder, mayhem, death to seem like see. an accident. And they find the Chihuahua. Clyde yes, to make it look that I way. I grew up on a big reservoir. Come back upstairs it's all when you're a big ready. Conspiracy. It's always, it's yeah, on exactly that. right. On TV shows and stuff like that, it's always the reservoir. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Thank God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean. Really? How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? Well... This is our job, Peggy. We, we gotta do it. Oh, you're right. So, what's the plan now? The screen. I think we should call Virginia back. Alright, I'll get her on the line. Alright, so... Okay, this, Forrest, shut the music this off. This is the part well, I, did, I didn't get Gallo's to see Drake. last time. This is Forrest Nash. So I'm interested to see what she We're says. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Fredman Plunker here. Who's this? Is it you, Goose? Plunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Radio Man? What's up? Solving mysteries, saving lives. The huge. Right, right, the right, right, right on. Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? Sh she asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. Whistling turd. So we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's big of you, Plunker. No, oh, <laughs> it's nothing. <sighs> Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, Radio Man. I'll just go get her. Yay. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm I'm glad you're still okay. Oh, Forrest. All right, here we go. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Sorry to hear that, but listen, hey, we need to talk. What about? We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Does the name Clive 
mean anything to you? Clive? Uh -oh. No. I don't know that name. Liar! What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Mm. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Pop, pop, pop. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. We thought so too, but... You don't understand. All oh. those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, mm -hmm. but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. One day, I came into work to find a boy on my Hey, slab. Ruby. And Good to I see you, Ruby. Autopsy, hey, Ruby, if you don't mind, you should check Discord. Clyde. I sent you a message. He just burst in, and he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of Everybody course, I in said the house. no, mm -hmm. but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. Mm. For me, he used both. My goodness. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said. And that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. My goodness. I don't know why he had me do it, but... My sister needed me. You have to understand. She needed me. We understand. Hey, this is live on the air, too. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. Ooh, the mystery. The mystery. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Oh, we know. Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Do you want to call her? Yes, I do. Call them all. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but she's the something just doesn't right add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than no she's problem. saying. No problem, Ruby. I wonder what she's hiding. <laughs> we'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. Yeah, we're not I'll be push. careful. We're not going to push All too right. hard. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Aha, so, Forrest, you're through. again, Hello, we didn't get a chance to do this Who is because this? two Hello people again, died Sandra. last time. It was it's these Forrest two Nash people. Of the the scream. scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, Nintendo says the studio makes me want to finish to my setup now. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Tonight. I like it. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest? Worst. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Alright. Uh... Really? Well, that sounds nice. I might just call you I back have to be nice because I don't want to scare off. Oh, you got my number. But what about tonight? Is there anything you want to talk about right now? Remember why we called, Forrest? I did. Of course. <laughs> Do you know why the Whistling Man might have targeted you? Ha! Or like Adele. He was just a 
knife wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. Superhuman Even cardio. After anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific. He used to care. I know, right? Know about the death of a boy named George. In a stew. I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. It's okay, Sandra. We know. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. <sighs> this studio is my life. After I found the body in the river... She's told us. That's I good. It was my studio. Do you understand? Sure. I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. Sandra? Who was he? He was... He said, if I told everyone I found the kid in the reservoir instead of the river, he... He... Uh... I'm sorry. I can't do this. And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great, Forrest. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Oh, sorry. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Boris. Oh, no. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. No, I don't wanna. Oh, come on! <laughs> it's his birthday. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. Uh, fine. What's his name? Thank you, Boris. He's my Uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. This kind of thing besides happy birthday, you would like to say to Mr. Pepper... Oh my god damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza. Start again, you... You son of a bitch! Stop calling! <laughs> damn it, Peggy, this is your fault. My fault? I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. Ah. <sighs> Don't worry, we've already got another caller on the line. Just pick it up, okay? This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. No. <laughs> caller. Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> he is truly crazy. <laughs> Forrest? Forrest? Are you okay? There is no forest, only Zool. <sighs> Forrest? I hope. The whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest. Sorry, sorry, that was... <clears throat> that was too much. It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. Okay, good. We've got another call, whenever you're ready. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's... I have still a chance to stay. All I'm gonna say about that... Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, and is with me, Forrest Nash. I have been wrestling with it a little bit. Calling. I don't. Uh, I, I really don't again, have an Forrest. idea right now. Don, Don, we played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Uh, never mind that now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. 
Are you in danger? I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Right. Okay. Tell us everything. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. We haven't grabbed that yet. Can a neighbor let you in? Oh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. I need that um, code to get inside. Which yeah, apartment chest block do you live a little in? bit. A little bit. Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment building between the town hall and the trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries Now listen, night. you'll hear a dog. Shit. That's how you know. I'm guessing you're not a dog person. No, I'm not. It's my neighbor's dog. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. Listen, I can't get any... He's coming down the street. I don't think he's seen me. Are you hearing David Scopo? I need your help. I need the code for that security system, or I'm gonna die. Oh well. Um, what's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. All right. Starling Security 4000, huh? That's right. Very newly installed. I need the key code before the whistling man gets me. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Don into her apartment. You're going to love this next track. All right, so you were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me, or was there something... Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Let yeah. me go. Well, let me go. I'll tell you what. Let me go. We have a Starling 4000 or whatever here yep. at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe you can find... The door's haunted! Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone. All right, well... Eh. Okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Alright, so we gotta get the papers for Starling 4000. This is, um... What was that? I thought I saw a button. Me don't like the music. The music sounds very, very ominous. He's gonna eat my soul. All right, we got hurry, 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 run, 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 boop, and boop, hurry, 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 and it should be. Well, I thought it was here. It's in here. It's down here somewhere. I remember it. Remember, if you jump scare me, I may poop.
Order delivery form. Starling must have left this by accident. The system's not even installed at Woodside. Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Wahaha. <laughs> Speed run this baby. So we we don't need to let Dawn in this time. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Do you yep. think we should give him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... That might be a good idea. Okay, one moment. I got the number here. Patching you through. Shit. He probably can't hear it over the this music. Team. Forrest, I don't yeah, know about this. <laughs> this is super weird. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Right, so okay. We can't let Don in. So. Don is evil. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, Start are you there? Hungry. This is Forrest Ooh. Nash from 189.16, The Stream. But we're oh so close, God. though. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? All right, so we want to give them the arm test activation. The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. You're welcome, Don. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Ah! Is she? Yes. inside and turn on the radio whoever that was she was trying to break into the ring she forest man you got no idea that was him that was the whistling man the alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle to... i don't like hurting folk but i can't let anything happen to maxi he's my best friend you know yeah I... listen man i'm heading back inside I'm gonna barricade that window my man thank you you and peggy can skate for free whenever you want forever that's nice. a done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Okay, Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we process what... just happened. So, the whistling man... Is a, is a woman. woman? I had my suspicions. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. Yes, I did. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you hmm. into letting her in before she attacks you. So I guess time before the next. 
Hey, zombie. Thank you for lurking. Thank you for being here, zombie. Yeah, and I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Even if it's just, if it's a minute, if it's five minutes, if it's just to say, hey, remember, I appreciate you and I'm thank I'm very thankful. We're neighbors. Look out for each other. So I hope everything Stay goes well safe. in your meeting. The killer was calling themselves Don. This could be a fake name. It is. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. Mm. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time <laughs> to take a call. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16 The, the Scream. Hey, man. Murphy? Damn straight. What's going on, Murphy? You in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And since you asked folks to call in if they could help out, well, I'm calling. I don't know if I can say as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando if I didn't try to help, you know? You're a good father, Murphy. Absolutely. Fernando's a lucky kid. Oh, thanks. So, uh, what do you want to know? Well, Murphy what can died you tell last us? time, so this should uh, be new info. I don't know, really. All right. Well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Okay. What about the killer herself? Herself? <laughs> Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. Well, I went toe to toe. It was a man, man. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. <laughs> I know, but man, how could it have been a woman under that mask? Let's just move on. Do you know anything about the history of the Whistling Man? No, sir. Tonight's the first time I ever heard of him. What? I moved here three years ago, man. What do you want from me? Nothing. You and Fernando just stay safe. Right. Sorry I couldn't help you all more, man. Now, if you'd have asked me about gators... Gators? Right, we have a call coming in. Sorry, Murphy. I think that's all we've got time for right now. Uh, all right, all right. I'll catch you all with the gator talk later. Please don't. Not. Well, folks, that was a bust. But perhaps our next caller. I'm has okay. I'm more okay, Ruby. Tell us. I'm a little Let's find out. under the weather today. I do apologize. Um, I'm, I'm a little burned out, as they say. Um, just work really at stuff, you know. It's okay. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 oh, Nancy Drive. Right. My best friend's been stabbed. He's. Hey, Big Shot, hit the button and take the call. He's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Hey, big shot. Somebody's been stabbed. Can, can you tell me what happened? We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that. And I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh, no. Forrest. Then what happened? And they just stabbed him. Casey, was his attacker the whistling man? The who? They had a mask and wore all black? That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, <laughs> but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait. Why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please! He needs to get to the hospital! I can't drive, so we need an ambulance! Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason! Jason Parker! 
Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and then... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg! We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. All right. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason spiel. Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. Thank you, He's Ruby. bleeding it heavily. Will. It oh, will. God, I'm it just sorry. The ambulance is... Well, you know. I just need a change of I job is all. Please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first and then finding someone to stabilize him. Yes. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. I severely All I can do is talk you through the Lizzie procedure as quick as I can. Really when I get done with this, so I am so hungry. You think you can handle that? We don't really have much choice. I didn't click that one. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, from the top, then you need to get him go. comfortable that's and try flat. to stem the that's bleeding. Lay him down. Really Apply flat. continuous that's pressure flat. directly flat. to the affected right, area. <laughs> when the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Yep. Yeah. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. Yeah. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. We got this. Glad you got it so far because there's the more power to go. of the internet. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. Shock and all. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply the real mystery of this of game. If it's safe, is how these three pieces of paper circulating to his keep organs. coming back. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. All right, uh, don't replace bandages, elevate his legs, keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding, find someone to get him stabilized, and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Uh, Hello? Hello? Forrest, right, are you there? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly! He's still bleeding! I need help! I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? Do not it's touch. It's gotta be hell! Should I pull it out? No. No! Don't touch the knife! The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Laundry for something like a towel or a shirt. Hold that over the wound. Okay. Looks like I'm gonna have to buy you some new whites, Jason. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on, and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. 
Just shout if you need anything, and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's gotta get to the hospital somehow. Any suggestions, Peggy? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah. Yes. Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. If I'm making so you sick, I apologize. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. I was getting kind of Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training Infinite day, paper, I don't know recycling. who knows first yeah, aid. Yeah, for realsies, though. Could you call them and ask? It's I like... I know everybody's ooh, numbers. Oh. I've ooh. only ever called oh. Karen. <laughs> everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Okay. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's Ow. a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. No. But there are a couple of problems with that. No. Naturally. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office would if get If you'll let me go, I'll look. Right. There is something else. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? No. Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic Guys, things that have information She's talking on me to them. death. <laughs> you put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical talking. records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Hey, Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. <laughs> I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. <sighs> I just have to look around. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> What more is there to do? Okay. I'll patch my mic down to the office burr, 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 so you'll hear me over burr, burr, the intercom. Burr. Let me go, let me go. Alright, cool. Alright, going to Reggie's office. Now, if I remember, we saved this guy last time. So we should be good to go. Looks like I need a four digit code. Nice. Almost like I knew. Okay. Was it here where the CD was? Sorry, the vinyl. Negatory. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm in, Peggy. I found the floppy disks. Just put it in the slot, right? You got it. Remember, we need somebody with medical training who lives near 25 Nancy Drive. Let me know when you've got somebody. And don't waste time on anybody that can't help us. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I got the safe open, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be looking for in these files. We need to know who can do first aid, and we need them to be close to Nancy Drive. Anything further away than a street or two is probably too far. Anyone can take two boxes. Good night. Box. Got it. I'll take another look at the files. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. Someone just banged against that glass. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. 
Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please, head up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Guys, it's time to go, pal. I'm trying to get the rest of you. the pub of all of us. What's happening? What do I do? All right, let's see. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the police seem to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood I love this flowing poster, to by his the vital way. organs. Got it. He eats at Chupacabras. I'm looking at my notes. We need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah. I still have some laundry next to me. I'll wrap him in some blankets. Just give me a second. Sorry. Sorry. Jason's bleeding through his bandages. Sh should I get him new ones? Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm, so... I'll use my jacket. What's going on? Oh, you see the warm. light, right? I'll fix his bandage Boop. and get him warm. Boop. Boop. Hold on, please. <laughs> What happens when I'm out here? Just relax now, okay? Mountains. Okay. Gotta be Don't strong. Be Is he? Is he gonna... Casey, I need you to be strong for Jason. Sit with him and reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. Okay? Okay. Please. I, I can't give him what he needs. Please. I okay, got what him. you need. Right, boy, Just let me hurry. answer. Yes. Who was it? We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. So he didn't the really funny thing about that is you Jason, have to find out. He's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five, four, two, zero, seven, three, five. Calling now. Let's help you pick... Uh, who the hell is this calling me at? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. Let me just cut the have future. I know, right? Need your help. <laughs> Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or... Never mind. He's lost a lot of blood, mm. and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, I we're not kidding. Man. A man is gonna die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I... I haven't been called on for over ten years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's Ooh, passed out right guys. now. I do apologize. Did you say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak, and then just started thrashing. What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. Derby chair. Someone is coming. You're gonna be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. Why don't we 
call of Reginald Scott. John Hester, I'm here about Mason. Please let me in. I'm guessing that's Jason there. Casey, I'm going to need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Woo! Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back Comes later. Let's go there. Now. Good luck, everyone. God, I hope he's going to be all right. <sighs> And with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. We did it! Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Fine. All right, so we're we're at the end of the game now. I'm, I know I usually close around seven, but we're gonna go a little extra longer just so we can finish this tonight. Double the star. I didn't stream Thursday. I do apologize. My voice was completely gone. <laughs> Peggy. Oh. I know him. You love him. This is Roddy Snatcher with his new single, Final Breath. It's getting pretty late. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. Let's do it. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through, too. When you're ready, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh and Maxie's oh. here too. Mm. Oh. Hello to you both. What's on your mind, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Did you see or hear anything during the attack earlier? Not exactly. You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. Hmm. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team, too. Bum, bum, bum. Keep talking. What happened? We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. See? There was a you whole wouldn't have this information because he died last I could time. See it, you know? Ricky, please. What was her name? I never got her name, man. He just called her Bean. I, I didn't really know her before or, or see her after that. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. <sighs> I just remember a pretty girl, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time. And then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. Mm. I looked up and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And, and I never ran so fast in my life. Something, I ran straight home. Something's happened. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling <laughs> man was Let's just another it. kid. Yep. We're gonna finish yeah. it. I don't know how George died, but... Uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. No. And... Ricky, it wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. It took a long time to learn, but... Yeah, just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, man. Anyway, 
I think it's time for me and Maxie to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you do it. See, again, oh. this Not is great. why I went back and played again. Because uh, these little right, tidbits folks. of the story Looks we like miss we because certain people case. die. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If Bean. she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in, but hang on. What's up, Peggy? Mm. Peggy? You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Coming up for your listening right, pleasure, so. it's Caged Tiger with their single, One Last Goodbye. Ah, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got back through. Yay! Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. Ooh. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sarah? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. Uh, anyway, we got oh, back yeah, into we radio saved her. range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. Ever since you found Sheriff Matthews, it's only gotten worse. It's been a long night. Well, it shouldn't be too much longer now. I'm glad I got through to you. I wanted to let you all know what's going on. I made it to Henderson. Ooh. If we yeah, hurry, we might can get under four hours. <laughs> they had no idea what was happening. After I told them, well, their sheriff sent a goddamn squad back with me to stop this. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the Whistling Man is, we They're can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The Whistling Man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. That's we're a still satisfying a little sound. Out of town. So if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. So once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Boris Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Oh. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll Sorry be with our that. killer behind bars. Take care now. Okay. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Best we don't waste any time then. Let's get back on air. You got it. Bringing you back live. Now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, really? I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over. Almost but over. for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. Yay. I'm giving you an update on Jason. John, is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. In perspective. I've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. Pretty cool. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. Have you had been there? So then? different. God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. <laughs> We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. 
Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Hmm. <laughs> Is this Forrest? Jason! We meet at last! It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the Whistling Man is Come still on. out there. Yes, the Whistling Man's still out there. Why do you ask? You know something about the Whistling Man, don't you? Yeah. I do. Can we talk about what happened earlier? Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean... He was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Mm, sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. Yep. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. Mm hmm. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on like he'd never existed. Who killed George that night? <sighs> Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. We decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. The party that night, I left the group for a second, met our whistling man, pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone, started an almighty panic, those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I wonder what happens if I everybody was dies. playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? What happened? Spooky. Are we still on air? <laughs> How do we get it back on? I don't, uh... Oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Okay. Reggie picked it up a while ago, in case you ever needed to do an emergency okay. broadcast. Okay. An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war? Alien attack? Alien attack? Broadcast to the serial killers location to the cops? So end this nightmare? Fair point! It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Okay. Press that. Let me. Oh, see you when you're back. Okay. Here we go. Speed run. Do 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 do. Beedy boo 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 boo. Beedy boo boo boo. Boo boo boo. Boo 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 boo. All right, speed run. Do 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 do. If you know what that game's, if you know the music this game I'm singing from, you're awesome. Why is this station so big? I've asked myself that many times. Why is this station so big? It's like he heard my thoughts. 
That must be it. Oh, we've got power. All right, let's wrap this. Let's wrap this game up. Ooh. The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. 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 We got to say Peggy. Peggy, no. Peggy, don't. Not Peggy. What the hell? Sugar muffins. All right, here we go. Past the point of no return. Oh no. Peggy, where'd you go? Rude. No way. This can't be happening. Um. A, a call. Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. Got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well... Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. I told you he was a jerk. Tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But he been crawling out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well... He knows he'll get it. Mm -hmm. Wait, then... Who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you at all of Gallows Creek. Pew. To my boy, Henry Barrow. Your son? You mean you... Like the... That he... Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. Bum, bum, bum. There were two whistling men tonight. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. Don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest. Hmm. Rocking my sweet boy away like an animal. You deserve and it. And Murphy, he, he was right, wasn't he? He did fight a man. He did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Did you say Barrel? Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. There we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Don't mind me. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Punch him again. I'd be quiet if I were you, Teddy. But I... I'd listen to Forrest. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Mm. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. <sighs> and not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest... It's not gonna... chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what... Really happened to George all those years ago. You got eight minutes. Okay, Marie. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I. I said you speak when you're spoken to. Now. You've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. Mm. And that's why I want you to interview us. Interview you? Uh, all right. 
I can do that. Thank you. I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story, Forrest. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> Uh-oh. I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just, uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Teddy, be honest with me or we're both going to die. Honest? Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. <coughs> God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just the night that Mooney went missing. Mm. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God. <laughs> Who was there? So you're not watching chat. I've Jason gotta answer these specifically. George, of course, uh, Just keep the last two people George alive. Last three people along. alive. Brought Marie. And Roller Ricky. He was there too, wasn't he? Yes. Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky. Our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came I don't know how I'm gonna deal with this day. dude. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life, so I helped him keep himself together. Yeah. You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, mm. bloody, like he'd just been stabbed, and the whistling man. Screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. Pranks do but hurt. Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... Mm-hmm. Get my tea. That's it. Afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I... Oh. oh, God damn it! You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. So we talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Woohoo! Oh. the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point. Mm. And when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing. 
I could stall for time here. How did you feel in that moment? I felt like nothing was real. I felt small and confused. And who was under the mask, Marie? Who was the whistling man? It was Chuck. Chuck Brody. Laughing away. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Said it. A lot of this is new information. What next? Nothing. I mean, it was just Teddy. George fell off Whistling Point. How do you know what happened? I saw it. You pushed him. You were up there. <clears throat> you were dressed as the Whistling Man, too, and... I didn't push him, God damn it! I just chased him up there, and he kept backing up. When I saw mm. he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. <laughs> you bitch! No one's You're on the radio. After all you did. If she's lying, why the cover-up? My future was at stake, Ash. You know what it's like. People like us are bred for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, mm. Lord. And then governor. And then, who knows? Blah, blah, blah. What happened? That night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke. Gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Blunch. Why should a blip ruin my future? George was a blip? He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night, but... Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own the most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir. All the one family. Of this the is river. crazy. What my and living in a small town, we know about dealings. one family room and everything. Nothing it's crazy. The false reports. I do apologize for not reading chat. I'm That's trying to. You this Sarah is the Madden last too, line of questioning, Maria? and I got to get it right. Not just to get him out of the way, but. Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And. I saw. I'm. I'm sorry. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper, but no. That coward killed the story. <sighs> we'll take care of Maurice Russell later. I like the way she said that. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. We're at Gallows Creek High in the gymnasium. Hey, that's right, Forrest. 
Not that it matters, but yes. He looks shocked. He's like, anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So. Marie? Where? Oh, my God. Peggy? Oh, man. Teddy? You've got to help me. I... Quiet. You'll talk more later. Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy, it's been so long since I've seen your face. I worry. Uh, we're, we're over time. Oh my God. I have to do this under four I hours to get achievement. That's okay. Thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Look. Forrest seems lost for words. Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier. While you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. This match is pretty cool. When you walked in, you found out. That my sister is the whistling man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? Look at chat real she quick. said that it was my last chance to see my sister. Let's see. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me. Mario 64, Come Ruby got the blue. <laughs> and I just. I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just. What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. Begged mom and dad to do something about what happened that night, but did they care? No, they told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned that I'd been with George. And, and, uh, Who are you? I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's mom and dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead, they're gone. So that's well, messed up. Mom and dad are gone, now I'm with my sister. For the next best thing. Don't. Marie, listen to me. You don't have to do this. Someone has to pay for what they did. Marie, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She she kept it here on her desk. It's what moving card? Here. The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I. Well, I. Henderson Police! Freeze! No! Uh oh. Henry, get out of there! Ah! Uh oh. We have two wounded and we're in pursuit of the suspect. Uh oh. Leslie, how's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. Be okay. God, Marie. Hey, Zara. I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now, we got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her. got away, though. It's over. Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben, Forrest Nash. And it's been a scream. That's messed up. Look at that. Look at that board, everyone. Everyone is safe. Woo!
There's more stuff. This wasn't here last time. like I thought he would. Maurice looks just like Jameson. He pops up right here on the screen. circle. I'm I'm kinda nervous. Alright guys, let's dance. Thank you, Vinny. Thank you, Nintendo. Sign of him. That's not cool. Please don't come in that door. Please don't be hiding in here. Don't show up here. everybody that is killer frequency and let me tell you something the way it unfolds the way that um everything goes you know it's just a crazy game i i loved it i highly recommend it uh playing um if you've watched this playthrough give it some time forget about things and then go through it and experience it for yourself but um that's it for me. Uh, I went an extra hour today because I missed Thursday. But thank you all for uh, bearing with me. I know I was in a kind of a eh, mood today, but um, thank you so much, Nintendo, Ruby, uh, Retro Tiburon, Zombie, Carla, um, Omega Ace Gaming, uh, Lizzie was in here, Mazin was in here, and thank you all for being here. But, um, I don't know when my next stream will be. Yeah, we're doing some cleaning around the apartment. We got an inspection coming up. So I'm kind of working on that too. If nothing bends or breaks, maybe Thursday. But until then, guys, ladies, everyone, 
Have a wonderful week. Stay safe. And be careful when you answer the phone. <laughs>